there. I finally got Mick Miller and Bernie Clifton on. It's been it's been about a month because trouble is they're old men, you see, and they don't know. Another about minute, your time's up. That's it. See you next week. <laughs> Well, we've got two very, very talented. Well, what's he doing? <laughs> <coughs> we've got two very talented people coming on. And, uh, As well, who are they then? <laughs> I'm waiting for them to come now. It's going to take another three weeks to get them on. But uh, I've got the lovely Bernie Clifton and also the gorgeous Mick Miller with that beard. Hi, Al. How are you guys? How are you? Hey, 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 Mick, how about that? I'm lovely and you're gorgeous. You should have gone to Specsavers, John. <laughs> They're all wearing glasses. It's, just... <laughs> it's the sign it's of the just... times, isn't it? <laughs> it's great to have you on. Now, obviously, you both, what careers you've had. I mean, God. Had. I mean, it, it reads like a, <laughs> it had. reads like a book. But quickly, Bernie, what have you been doing during lockdown? I've been sitting on the toilet quite a lot. <laughs> quite a lot. Yeah, looking out. If I, look, if I sit on the toilet, I can just see over the top of my mortgage, Johnny. <laughs> just, I'm just, I'm on, I'm on lockdown, shielding, bubbled. Uh, we're on, uh, we have a, we have a system here up in Derbyshire that once a week, uh, they throw the postwoman over the hedge. <laughs> and we and we, we hose her down with TCP. Anyway, and uh, and that's it. That's the highlight of the week. <laughs> it's brilliant. So, Nick, what have you been doing during lockdown? Anything crazy? No, no, just work, walking the dogs. Um, that's it. I've, I've looked at my car the other day, and my wheelie bin's done more miles. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah. We're lucky. Do you know what, this, Johnny? It's the anniversary uh, this month since Mick and I did a, a a tour of the United Arab Emirates with a stage version of the Flintstones. And I know Mick will back me up here. It actually had a mixed reaction because um, the people, apparently, the people in Dubai don't like the Flintstones. But the people in Abu Dhabi do. <laughs> do you know, Mick? I thought when I get him on, he's going to be as quiet as a church mouse, but he's just sweet still. I mean, he's like, he's there, you know. Honestly. And I, I, I did the production of uh, Gandhi on Ice. That was good. <laughs> Bambi on it. Was it Gandhi on Ice? Yes, or Bambi? Yes. <laughs> oh, dear. But so listen, you both obviously have you ever obviously did the last laugh in Vegas, but have you ever worked together before in any venues at all? Yes, we did. Yes, one famous one, which was the Circus Tavern at Perfleet. Oh, Perf. Oh, is that the is that the one you told me about, Bern? Is that the? Uh... I don't I don't remember. I don't know who this gentleman is. He seems very <laughs> seems a, a nice I, man. But... I was in the dressing room. I arrived a bit late. Bernie was there, and then he's gone, you know, it takes him an hour to, like, sort his props out. You know, get the gas bottles to blow the uh, the diver thing up. And the shark. Has he still got the big man well, as well? That was that was the dress. I had to get changed in the car, because he had the dressing room <laughs> full of air products. <laughs> so I, uh, no, we were getting ready, and I was, uh, I did the bank call, and came back and he was in the corner of the dressing room and I uh, had a brand new pair of shoes. They were absolutely beautiful. They were like um, paint and leather with a grey bit right through the middle of them. They were absolutely beautiful. And I had them in the bags, as you do, you know, like, you know, the proper, like, woolen bags. And I took them out, took, took my shirt out, hung my suit up, got my dicky bow on the hanger, and I went for the bank call and I came back and I opened the bag again with the shoes. And there was this pair of shoes and they were just full of mud and crap. <laughs> and it scuffed. But I thought, how have they got like that? You could see that the mud had been on for years. And I was just sat with me, head in my eye. And I thought, what, what's happening here? Anyway, I looked over and he started laughing. <laughs> 
and he'll tell you he had he had a pair the same, but he'd had them for like five years and started like washing the car and hoovering in them and doing the driveway, so they're full of crap. And no. he just put them in the thing. It was very funny. I'll never forget. We, like you said, I've been there all day at Perfleet, organizing, organizing the props, and uh, Mick Mick turned up. As he as he said, and he pulled out from this woolen bag this fantastic pair of designer shoes, and they've got like a Cuban heel. They were black, grey, patent leather, and I've never seen anything like this these shoes. And I went, wow, look at that, fantastic! I've never seen anything like them apart from the fact that five years earlier I bought a pair exactly the same. But over the years, I'd scuffed them. I used to play football with my lad wearing these shoes. But I just happened to have them in the back of my car. And I went, wow. So off he went for his alleged band call. I'd love to be, I'd love a recording of one of your band calls, Mick. <laughs> so off he went. So I went out to the car and I got this battered pair of identical shoes to the lads. And I put them in the bag and hid his brand new ones. And well, he came back and there were two or three more people all sitting waiting for the reveal and he pulled it and the, the expression on his face he just went and he looked and he went it was like i can't what it, oh. fantastic mate anyway I've just, got a funny story about our dear friend bobby bald sadly no longer with us but a great story about bobby mick what was that all about what was the uh, well, I, I just think the whole Las Vegas uh, situation was, um, I was a privilege to be part of it, Mick, and I'm sure I'll, I'll never, ever forget it, will you, for the whole... Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, well, how, how did that come about? I mean, how did that, um, you know, materialise? Because, it, you know, obviously, you, all the, you know, like you had, um, you know, all the, all the stars on there from yesteryear, like, you know, the lovely um, oh, Bobby Crush, you know, I mean, Bobby Crush was on it. You had Sue Pollard, Anita Harris, um, Callan and Ball, uh, somebody called Bernie Clifton with the with horse. Um, I was I don't know about you, Mick. I was really lucky to get the uh, to get the gig because I used to uh, at the time it's about three years ago now. I was on the road doing a Rod Hull tribute act. <laughs> <laughs> what it involved me doing? I I used to travel with a ladder, and I'd just go up and I'd adjust the TV aerial at the club or wherever I was working. And then, I'd, and, and apparently it was going quite, it was going quite well, actually. And it was, it was, it was him that they booked. They wanted me to do me Rod Hull tribute act. But eventually I ended up in Vegas with this wonderful gentleman here. Fantastic. What a time, Mick. I remember seeing you, your first television, which was Zoo Time. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever do? Uh, did you ever do those um, those weekends, uh, Mick? When we were, uh, I know it, there was a there was an agent called Jack Sharp. Oh, Jack! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, oh, great lad! I, I still speak to Jack now and again. One summer, yeah, a lovely man. One summer season, it was Blackpool, nineteen eighty three. And on a Sunday morning, all the turns turned up at Blackpool Airport if they were working in the north, you know, like Blackpool, Scarborough. Um, and they'd turn up at Blackpool Airport to pile into a couple of aeroplanes and then fly south. And on my particular aeroplane this Sunday morning, um, they had to actually take two of the seats out because the shark, <laughs> they couldn't get the shark in the plane. It was like a six-seater. So they took... They took, they took two seats out, so I've got the shark in the back, I've got the ostrich with his head in one of my biscuit tins, <laughs> I've, got the, I've got the cat on my shoulder, <laughs> and uh, it also in the plane, and he was training for his pilot's licence at the time, Mick, was Roger de Corsi, so he got lucky, and in, and in the other seat we've got to Keith Harris, with Orville and Cuddles. <laughs> I remember thinking, if this plane crashes, they'll think we've landed on a safari park. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's a lovely they were, they were the Sunday concerts. I'll never forget. I got one from Blackpool Airport 
and it was the inaugural flight of Manx Airways to Jersey on a Sunday. So I got to this plane and they wanted me to work on the plane, you know, do a bit. <laughs> so it was all travel agents. So I thought, that's not bad. It was like a 50-seater. So I said, I'll just stand there and, um, you know, do me bit. Anyway, we take off and all the bit. And I'm, I'm looking and I'm thinking, well, I'll have to use a phone. Obviously, they don't have a microphone. So the stewardess says, yes, um, when you're ready. It was at the back. So I'm on doing my gags, right? And there's 50 heads all facing the other way. <laughs> Rock, rock, that was a wrong booking. <laughs> that, that reminded I had the same experience when I was doing the voice, Mick. <laughs> and no, nobody, nobody turned round. <laughs> just but regarding the Vegas, the, the whole Vegas thing, it it started. However, we got on this seven four seven. But I remember the British Airways. Um, we took off from uh, Heathrow. And we stopped in the Isle of Man to take on more wood. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember the plane was overloaded. It took off from a kneeling position. <laughs> <laughs> and we, uh, the but British Airways, the crew and the people, they were so kind of cooperative. And after lunch, we'd been, we'd been flying about two hours. The captain came on and said, ladies and gentlemen, this is your this is your captain speaking. Welcome aboard this flight to Las Vegas. And now for something completely different. And I came out the office on the on the ostrich, running up and down the aisle. And these people on the plane got no idea who I was. And they were, they started hallucinating. They thought they'd have too much drink with the punch. So, so you can wherever I've worked, uh, to say I've done my act at thirty five thousand feet. It's on, yes. it, it's on my CV. And, but Mick, then the fun started when we actually got to Vegas, didn't it? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I've never been. I just couldn't believe it. And uh, we're in them big cars, you know, them big American cars, and to the house. And the house was absolutely out of this world, wasn't it? Beautiful. Big villa. Oh, it was. In fact, I, I, I think... Yeah. It, say again. Sorry. Was it on the outskirts of Vegas, or was it in, virtually it in Vegas? It wasn't too far. It was only a couple of mile away. Trouble, trouble was, it was in Bournemouth. <laughs> <laughs> it I wasn't. Thought, it was just on the edge of town. I think it was. I think it was a brothel. Really? <laughs> well, because, that's, that's what Pollard said. I, I, uh, I asked the chambermaid. I said, "What, what do they usually do here? Because it's not a hotel." And she went. I don't know, sir, but they have wild parties. And then when we were driving in, the next day I saw the sign outside and it's got dreams and desires. <laughs> and it was owned by a dodgy Chinaman. Oh. <laughs> Do you remember when he turned up? He turned yes. up on the back and, and Sue Pollard, <clears throat> like, you know, Miss, Miss, Miss Shy, and, Shy and Reserve Pollard, she cornered him, and he just came in and went, oh, he said, I am, uh, I am, Eric, I am uh, owner of the villa. And she said, is it a brothel? <laughs> and he went, oh, no, no brothel, but sometimes we have swings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But that, and then, Mick, they said, okay, you, there was, go and find yourself a bedroom, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that was it. That was like... Uh... That was a riot. <laughs> it, was, it was evil because what they what they did, Johnny, there was about well, there'd be seven or eight of us, nine of us perhaps, and only there was only six bedrooms. So go and find yourself a bedroom. Well, I, I'm fairly fit, but Jess Conrad passed me on the stairs like a gazelle. <laughs> and he found the first bedroom with a full length mirror. <laughs> oh, you know that, Jess? He'd love that, a full length mirror. And he, stood, and he stood in the doorway, Jess Conrad, saying, This is fine, this is good for me. But then it hit the fan because we realised, everybody realised at the same time, that there weren't enough bedrooms and people would have to share. 
And we were all jet lagged, mate. Well, you know, we've been on the road like for 24 hours, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. And what they hadn't told us was that just across the courtyard, there was another cottage with four bedrooms in it, but they never told us. They were they just waited for us to Im implode. <laughs> uh, and of course we did. But uh, what an experience though, Mick. Hey, well, I, the only thing I was disappointed at, I mean, we were there. I never, one, well, I never saw an Elvis. <laughs> I never actually saw an Elvis. We saw a fat Elvis. We, when my, me and my wife Sue went, we went to a place and there's a fat Elvis and he's actually got, one of the stars on the street, you know, a bit like Hollywood Walk, Walk of Fame. Yeah. They've got the Vegas Walk of Fame, and he's been there. He's, he's the act that's been there the most out of anybody, and he must be 30 stone, and he walks in, he's got a big chair at the king, and he waddles in, and you think, to listen, if you shut your eyes, it was Elvis. It was incredible. You know, you know you're saying about um, Jess Conrad. I did a TV with Freddie Starr uh, a few years ago. I was the warm-up. And uh, we, we did the show and it was the 40 years of show business. And Jess was a guest, right? So the, all the celebrities in the audience and Freddie got Jess out of the audience and said, oh, come on, come on. Can you come and sing uh, Sonny Boy or Mammy, whatever it was. It was one of the Al Jolson songs. So he sat uh, Jess on the, on the, do you remember it, Bernie? He sat I know the routine, chair. but wow. To me, get some, he said, can you find some black makeup to me? This was earlier. So I found it. When he, was singing, when he was singing, he's got this blue makeup and he's going like this while he's singing. It's, of course, you have to be careful of his hair, you know. You know. <laughs> it's funny though, isn't it? And he went mental. He went absolutely ape, and that they cut it out of the show, the TV. But he was just, he just said, "You've ruined me. You've ruined me. You killed me. You've ruined me." It's funny, well, when, we, when we went out to the desert one night, we went out to the desert with the Native Americans, and um, on the way there, you know, Jess, you know, he never stops talking, does he? He's going. So when are we meeting these Red Indians? And it was like, Jess, it's a Native American. No, we're going to see these uh, American Indians, anyway, Native American. Anyway, we get out there. And he starts chatting to this guy. You know, me and Tommy helped him to, like, put his teepee up. He lives in the teepee. So we're doing all that. And then he's sitting us down and doing all these things and the peace pipe and all that. And we came out and Jess says, I've got his email address. I said, how can an Indian chief have an email address? He lives in a teepee. <laughs> oh, but I think I think the magic of it, Mick, I mean, I'll, I'll never forget it, you know, to have, to have actually got to Vegas at, at this stage in, uh, in my life and then for it to have the reaction. And interestingly enough, our mentor, um, a, a gentleman called Frank Marino, has been on television over the last 24 hours because he was a close friend of uh, of the 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 Supremes you know Mary that's just died Mary Wilson yeah Mary Wilson and and Frank Marino uh, he was on the news yesterday um was was a very close friend and he was lamenting you, you know the loss but Frank Marino Mick looked at us we are, we all actually first met in a big rehearsal room in Wigan as you, as you would, if you're going to Vegas, if we first met in Wigan, all the turns, and they, they, they introduced him like, uh, and here he is, the biggest act that 35 years has been in Vegas, Frank Marino, and this guy came out, and we all, we all looked and went, what, who, what the, who? <laughs> he was like uh, a million miles from, um, from we had done all our lives. Anyway, the thing is, Mick, on that first day, and he probably loved what you did, but when I came out on the ostrich, <laughs> in a way, to audition for him, because he'd no idea what I did, he actually used that express. He actually said, what the? <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't, he just didn't get it. It was get, and they, he, he thought that he was heading, he was part of a, a huge car crash, Mick, didn't he? We had some great guys driving us around, and they couldn't. I mean, I mean we, our sort of lingo. Can has anybody got a bottle of water? And they didn't know what we're talking about. 
What is that? What is that? What do you, what do you want? A bottle of water. What? Water? You mean she wants some water? <laughs> so, but eventually we got to the um, we got to the Orleans, the big um, uh, the big theater in uh, in in Vegas, and uh, Frank was it was it was he wanted you he wanted you to alter your appearance, didn't he, Mick? Oh yeah, he wanted me to get my hair cut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's lovely. I'll, I'll get my hair cut and I'll lend yours. <laughs> it, it, but it, it, what did he say to you, Bernie? You said he said to me to you. He did lecture us. He said, uh, "Listen, they said uh, uh, this is Vegas. Vegas is another planet." He said, "You in front of a Vegas audience." He said, "They can smell the fear." I said, "Listen, mate." <laughs> Everybody that in this group, we've all worked Sunderland working men's clubs on a Sunday <laughs> lunchtime. So don't talk to us about smelling the fear. We know all about it. Uh, but fortunately, eventually, uh, we we all proved him wrong, and it went. I mean, it went down a storm. And he did come after the show, Mick. He did come back, and he was actually in tears because yeah. he, he felt his reputation was on the line, and to have actually, if you like, proved him wrong, because. Uh, if I say it myself, we, we have been round the block, mate. We do kind of know what we're doing, don't we? Well, that's it, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, rehearsals, I, I can't rehearse, really. you got to stand up, you know. So I was, um, I, I couldn't get on with the food, you know, when they just gave you them menus with, like, and it was all crap to me. It was all nachos and burgers, and I just couldn't do it. You know, I had to get something. So we had... Um, an hour and a half for lunch. I said, well, I'm... And the security, you know, they were going, well, you can't go out the hotel. I said, I'm not going out the hotel. I'm going the buffet. So I went to the buffet and I got something to eat. And on the way back, I'd only been gone 20 minutes. The casino. So I went on the roulette. <laughs> and I won 600 quid. <laughs> <laughs> So that was the best thing, not looking at them menus, nachos. And... What, what was it? What was it like to work with somebody like Sue Pollard? Because I've met Sue many times, and she's just a crazy person, you know, a lovely lady, but a crazy person. What, what, what was everybody like to work with? You know, it, you know, I mean, obviously Jess was like, you know, look at me, look at me, look at me. I mean, I've known Jess for years, but what was it like to be working on the same stage with you? I mean, the same people that. You know, there were big names on TV a few years ago and suddenly you all pushed together. I mean, surely it must have been some ego somewhere along the line, was it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was that, that, that was a genius. It was genius casting, actually, to pick us from all different strands and drop yeah. us into this villa. And, and Jess Conrad coming down, he didn't know how to open a packet of cornflakes, never mind cook an egg. He says, I'm never, what do I do? How does it, <laughs> and, and Pollard, 100 mile an hour. We, we, found a, we found a little key between a shoulder blades that we could put her on mute. <laughs> and, and Tommy, Tommy and Bobby, Bobby at the corner at the end of the table holding court, which is what Bobby did so well. And, and Tommy, you know, from the great yeah. British Baker, whatever, whatever Tommy was in, he was a hell of a cook, Tommy Cannon, still is, of course. Yeah. And uh, I was trying to fry an egg, and he was saying, "You don't, do, don't, look, you don't, don't, look, don't do it like that." Don't look. And and then lovely, what's her name, uh, Anita, sweetie pie. It was such a and Bobby Crush, uh, who was he had an operation on his toe while he was there, didn't we? He, he got the he didn't injured his toe, and then finally, finally at the sink, Kenny Lynch, who wanted to, he he thought it was the great escape. He wanted to get over the wall and get out. Okay. Well, you, know, you know, he said, he said, I've never been to Vegas. So he said to the producer, I'm taking Mick into Vegas tonight, you know, show him the, the strip. And the producer went, no, you can't. It's, it's lockdown. You're not allowed out. And he went, what do you mean I'm not allowed out? He said, well, you can't. He went, we're finished. What time are we starting tomorrow? 12 o'clock. It's now five o'clock at night. I'm taking him down. This We'll pay for our own taxis and all that. He said, no, you're not allowed. And he went, are you, the, are you the boss? He went, well, no, I'm not the boss. He said, well, go and get me the boss. 
<laughs> and I'm thinking, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I'll just don't start any trouble. Anyway, the boss came out. He said, I'm taking Meg to. No, you're not. It's locked down. And he went, all right. Well, I'll tell you what. If I give you the money back, you're paying me. Can I go home? <laughs> oh, it was a it was a magical magical mix of people, and I was remember Kenny said it was a oh, I've had enough of this. I don't bleed and need this. He said I'm a bleeding millionaire. He said I'm over the wall. He really was fancy fancy going. Uh, but what a chapter uh, to to have actually got to Vegas and 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 as we all as we all did make and 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 nail it was. Uh, was absolutely brilliant. stressful and we were tired everybody was knackered but uh, great result but listen i've got to go in a minute because i've got another show to do next year johnny I've got, I've, and I've, I've got i've got to go i've, I've got to go to morrison's so, uh... <laughs> but listen I, all i want to do is make is just mention the tie up the the, the flight home on on the on the morning of our departure we actually had a, a Bobby Ball and um, had to go into town to buy his new suitcase because he hadn't got enough capacity in his luggage to buy, you know, with all the souvenirs and everything he'd bought. So he actually went and brought a brand new suitcase and filled it. And we're all waiting for our tax to take us to the airport. There was about 30 pieces of luggage. And he went, you know what? He said, I just, um, I don't know what we're going to do when I get to Heathrow. He says, I don't know how I'm going to be able to recognise my case uh, because I've never seen it before. And I said, uh, I'll leave it to me. I'll think of something, Bobby. So I went uh, to the crew and I said, have you got any distinctive tape, like gaffer tape? And they said, yeah, we've got this orange. We've got a big reel of orange tape. In fact, I just happen to have it here. <laughs> this, is, this is the reminder. So what I did, I went to Bobby's case and I put a big length of this tape round the handle and I said I said there you are Bobby I put you some special coloured orange tape on the handle of your new suitcase so you'll recognise it oh Bernie genius thanks for that and off he went so I think well why not then I've got a big reel of tape so I did everybody's suitcase <laughs> everybody's suitcase had this orange and when he came back, he knew, you know, little Bobby, he had a short, bit of a short fuse, didn't he? <laughs> finally, we get to Heathrow, overnight flight, all jet lagged, and watching around the carousel, and these dozens of cases, all with orange tape. And I, I was very fortunate to, to that I didn't get lamped that, that morning at Heathrow. And and I did yours as well. You still got your tape on your. I've, it's, I've still got it on my little hand hand baggage. <laughs> that that was funny as well. When uh, remember they said go and sort your acts out and all that, and you've got your big trunk there, and you're opening it up and you you show me stuff that you're not going to use, <laughs> you know. And you said, uh, what do you think it should do with this? And I went, get us get a skip <laughs> well, well before we do go I mean um, um, Bernie have you done the Royal Variety Show yes a Royal Variety Show I, I can't remember I must get a list <laughs> <laughs> and then Mick you're on oh, you were on it and like it was like that was the year of the start of the sort of alternative comics when you did it and I watched it the other day we actually put it on on my FaceTime thing and it was you did the noddy, and that yeah. to me was I mean the audience were like I mean I've been to one they're like ooh, ooh, like this you know what I mean, but the, the 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 laughs you got you know from start to finish was just you know incredible and I just it's like watching you on that show it was you know and you think oh have all these people come on you know the ones that are, I I'm not into alternative comic you know what I mean it means I don't play golf but I don't you know, I'm not into alternative comedians. They do well. They do work with their own people, but you just did it and you nailed it, and it was absolutely. But the, the, the audience, you know, I think these TV producers don't realise that you know the people that go to the Royal Command do it on tradition every year, and they pay fortunes. Yeah. And then they're not in the twenties and thirties; they're all in the fifties, sixties, and seventies. 
Yeah. But they wouldn't know these young comedians are. So if someone comes on that they probably recognise and they can relate to, you've got you've got a better chance. Yeah. yeah all, the, all the older comics, I mean, like Tarby and all those sort of people go on, you know, as guests, and they do it five or ten minutes, five, eight minutes. You know what I mean? And they go bang, you know. But when they put an alternative comic on, I don't know whether it's canned laughter or not. You know what I mean? I saw a female comic, and I didn't laugh once. And, I, you know, that's not saying she was rubbish, but... Tell you what, I had I had a great thing in the dressing room, because I was on with Penn and Teller. Oh, brilliant. And we get in the dressing room, all, all the comics, plus Penn and Teller in this dressing room. So there's a massive big, you know, the big bouquet of flowers with the silver, the, the, the you know, the gold see-through foil over it, you know, so you can see the fruit. And it was massive. It was massive. So it's in the middle of the, the, the dressing table. And uh, Teller goes over and he opens it and he just takes a little bunch of grapes out and goes over and sits in the corner. So I waited for him till he ate one. And I went... Who's messing about with my props? <laughs> <laughs> Did you make him speak? Because he doesn't speak, does he? Well, in real life, he does, yeah. 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 Not, oh, yeah. So, Bernie, when, you know, I've showed you toured everywhere. And there's one thing, Bernie, that tickles me about you. People probably don't know this at home, but you actually have a microlight, a microlight plane. Yeah. I must get a list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I've been doing it, um, well, about nearly 40 years since I first uh, saw it and, and really just kind of fancied it. And uh, it's in a shed. There's a field just down the road. Uh, not that anybody's doing much flying at the moment, but uh, it's something I just got hooked on. It's called the, fl it's called the flying ostrich, Johnny. As, so, so, I can't, I can't so think so why. The, engine, the engine's at the back, yeah? The engine's, at the back. The engine's at the back, and it's just, like a, it's just like having a, if you can imagine a, sidecar of a motorbike like a little and then at the back there's a huge uh, like engine and propeller and a great big wing on top and it's something that um i wish i could do uh, i wish i could do more of you know while i can but i think we all need um well i personally just some some form of escape i suppose mick but have you got any escape hatch plan but uh, not really no i i just chill i don't uh, i don't don't play golf anymore I was never good at it. <clears throat> Can't go and watch any football. Yeah. You know. Um, he was I'm, a footballer. You know, you know, Mick was a professional footballer, Johnny. Really? Who was that for? Yeah, I played for Port Vale for four years. Really? I was signed by Sir Stanley Matthews. Really? Yeah. Brilliant. I was only looking the other day. I played in uh, Tony Curry's testimonial, who was a great player. Sorry. Yeah. The Leeds and uh, Rangers, Queens Park Rangers, Sheffield United, and, and, and also he went to um, he went to Queens Park Rangers, and he asked me to, he asked me to play in his um, testimonial because I was in uh, the England England youth squad with him. Really, he'd, fo he'd followed me career, so he said, "Will you come and play in my tes testimonial at Bramall Lane?" Oh. And he went, there was twenty eight thousand there. Wow. And I've arrived and walked in the dressing room and I just couldn't believe it. There was George Best, Jeff Hurst, <laughs> Billy Bremner. And you. And, and I'm playing with it. And luckily, I've got it all on uh, all on a, a disc. Wow. Um, yeah. What a thing to do. What a thing to do. Yeah. But, Bernie, you know your, your hobby. That plane, that bike the plane, does, what happens if the engine cuts out? Does it just glide to the floor? I've got, I've got a, I've got a book. It's page seven. In the event, in the event of it becoming very quiet. In fact, interestingly enough, when uh, I was in summer season in Great Yarmouth, um, well, probably 1981, I'd got this. Um, I, I just got this uh, microlight. A true story. So na naturally, I rang up the Daily Mirror. And said, so "That's Bernie Clifton. You know, I've got this Michael. I call it the Flying Ostrich. Um, do you think? Um, do you want to come and do a story?" So they sent this bloke down. His name, Mike Maloney, freelance photographer for the Daily Mirror. And he says, uh, "Go on then, fly it." I said, "Oh, I can't fly it." I said, "I've just got it." 
I said, but I haven't learned to, and I've got the, I've got a big sign right on the wing. It says flying ostrich. So you can do some photos. He said, listen, mate, I've just driven from London. <coughs> I've just, I wish I could show you this. Somebody's just, somebody, excuse me. I'm just looking out the window. I'll, uh, I'm on Skype. I'll see, I'll see you later. Listen, is that, guy. Is that, listen. Is, that, is that another bailiff? That was my, that was my principal carer. But um, it's Frank, it's Frank, come out of the scene. No, this guy said uh, you can't. Uh, I've come just driven from London. He says I can't take a few photographs. I said, well, I'll I'll run on the ostrich in front of the plane. He said, no, you've got to get in it. I said I can't. I've never even flown it. Anyway, one thing led to another. So I'm, I'm in this aeroplane sitting on the ostrich. And he said, well, go on, take off. I said, I can't. I'm never <laughs> I said, I'll taxi up and down. He said, well, can you hop it in the air? This is a true story. <laughs> so I can see daylight. And he's, he's lying on the floor, snapping me. And I'm flying up and down the runway, sitting on an ostrich in an aeroplane I've never flown before. And he went higher, higher. Anyway, in the end. And this all happened. Johnny, uh, in a field in Corton, in Corton, like d down the road from Potters, just down the road. Yeah. I have friends who owned a farm there and let and, and let me fly there. So I did a circuit of of the air, of the airfield uh, <laughs> or, uh, in an ostrich in an aeroplane. Now I always remember thinking. If you let me off this one time, I'll never do anything silly again. So happy, happy days, and uh, we're still here surviving. Listen, guys, thank you so much for coming on. And it's pleasure, been a Johnny. To have you on. We'll have you on again because I'll tell you what, we've only just <laughs> <scratched> the surface. <laughs> right. I mean, Mick, was it nice to get a word in, Mick? Was it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if you could. Anyway, listen, I'm going. I've got to go to Morrison's. My son Next time. If you, put right. me on, if you put me on with somebody I know, perhaps. <laughs> God bless you, mate. Love you lots, mate. Bye. 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 You know, I thought he'd never go. <laughs> oh, dear. How about that? Well, as you can see, I've got a different shirt on. So I did actually call that a little bit earlier because the reason being is that we, I couldn't get through to him. I've been trying to get through Oh, but a funny story uh, about all it. And Johnny Cleveland, great stuff, guys. Hello to Billy No Mates. Johnny, yeah. Saw Mick every night from Wigan Hilton in Wembley in 1981. Well done, Mick. Malcolm Wilson, afternoon. Hi, Malcolm. How are you? Got a few people coming on. Mick used to go golf with a friend of ours at Blackpool, who also was a Scottish footballer years ago. Brilliant. Uh, nice to have a chat. But there, Mick, thank you all. That's very kind. We, I'm getting a bit of chat now. Loved it. Thanks, fellas. Don't go away yet. We've got a bit more chat. I've got to tell you a true story. I was a red coat at Butlins in 1976, uh, the hot summer. And we had a red coat called Lee. And uh, Lee Friedman, his name. Lee Friedman. Leo. And uh, anyway, Bernie used to come there uh, every third Sunday of the month. And uh, I was going to tell the story with Bernie there, but I couldn't get a word in. So <laughs> it's a bit like me, really. Anyway, what happened? Bernie used to come on stage, and I was a compere, red coat compere. And we turned around and said, and Lee said to me, how does, he, how does he do that? So what he said, well, with the ostrich. I said, well, one of the stage guys, one of the stage hands, Chris, what he does, he carries him on his back. And he went, well, I said, he, he puts the stuff on, he carries him on his back. So Lee, believe it or not, he believed it. Seriously, he believed it. So he said, I, what's, what's he paying then? I said, well, he gives him a couple of quid for a few pints of beer. He went, I'll do it. He said, how much? I said, well, he does it for a tenner. He said, I'll do it for four quid. So I told Bernie, and three weeks later, to say every three weeks, we got a pair of tights, the same colour as Bernie's, and a pair of ostrich feet. Anyway, then the show starts, what happened? Bernie goes off the other side and comes on with this ostrich. And Lee went absolutely mental. He said, hang on a minute, whoa, 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 whoa. He said, he's doing my bit, he's, doing, he's taking my, I'm supposed to be doing that. And to this day, I still wind Lee up about it. We had him red coat a little while ago in Torquay, and I really wound him up, and it was fun. And they are two really, really lovely people. Thanks, George. Um, I've got to tell you, we've got um, um, obviously a few birthdays today. Um, we had, well, yesterday we had some birthdays as well. Eight, the 8th of um, this month was Alex Marshall, MBE. Alex Marshall, the uh, one of the world champions from the World Bowls. It was his birthday 
uh, day before yesterday, on the 8th. And then uh, yeah, um, yesterday was, of course, the lovely Tracy Trickster. Tracy Trickster. Tracy Trickster. Tracy Trickster. It's hard to say that. It was her birthday yesterday. And also, uh, it was Margaret Cleveland's, our very dear friend Margaret, whose husband, Johnny Cleveland, you all know from Potter's, plays the keyboard. And uh, he's not been working lately. John's been looking after his, his land. He's got loads of land. He's got so much land. So and I go down there and you, you get lost in 10 minutes. It's so much. And he looks up. But the lovely Margaret it was her birthday. And, and today, we've got Mike Powell, a friend of ours, Mike Powell, lovely guy, Mike, and the lovely Julie down there in Norwich. But we've also got Courtney. Courtney, And Courtney uh, made my wink for Mrs. B. Lovely girl. We've got to... Danny Savage as well. We've got Vicky Wells, Mike Murphy, and uh, you share your birthday with Holly Wallaby. Will it Wallaby, will it Wallaby uh, and also Philip Glen Glenister, the actor. Philip Glenister, the actor. It's been, honestly, it's been fantastic being on today. Um, yes, my sister Margaret. Yes, Liz, your sister Margaret. I know she's your sister. It's great to have her on. I'd have to get Margaret on one day and have a chat to her because I want to find out what it's like to have a husband who is a keyboard player, singer, entertainer, who's been doing it for hundreds of years. And, uh, I mean, Nigel's been, uh, he's, he's done all this, and uh, it's, Nigel, are you there? Come and say hello. We'll get Nigel to come and say hello. He will, he'll click it. Here he is. Look. He's coming in. Hello, Nigel. How Nigel, are you? <laughs> well, you what a great to, interview. You were supposed that's... to be on at the start, weren't you? We lost you. you we were about to go live, and you what got kicked what? off, technically. I know. We've had problems I don't know what happened. He just... What happened? I just touched the screen to put my earbuds, got little earbuds in, and it just all went. For, oh no! I mean, we've had we've had dramas with Mike and Bernie. This one was cursed. So, I mean, oh well, I mean, we tried for three weeks to get them on. We tried three weeks to get them on. It was incredible. All that night was getting all the women's laughter in there. Look, 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 enjoy the chat. Cheers, glad you enjoyed that. But we've been trying for three weeks, and every time I try. I we've, said been to Nigel, no, we've been on it all day. You're trying to get me that footage, and you did that on Skype yesterday, no. didn't you? I, yeah, I recorded it, and I thought, right, I'll get it on, and Nigel can do it. It'll be brilliant. You know, oh, you say, Mick, Mick was is fabulous, act, and he's a lovely man. He is such a lovely guy, and it's a shame that people don't want the the younger producers of today don't want young people. Sorry, they don't want our sort of age. They want young people. I mean, I went to, a, I did a warm-up for a TV show, uh, TV Nightmares, years, a few years ago. And Alan Connolly, Brian Connolly's brother, was the floor manager, but the actual producer was 24 years of age. Mm. I mean, 24, it's crazy, you know. Have you ever watched the nice news man, and someone will, somebody will come on the news and they are a specialist in travel or in, in foreign affairs and they look like they're 14 years of age? I know, look at the police. The police get younger, don't they? I mean, they, they you, you know, you go to the street and there's people all this happens and they're all at Nigel, they're all after you, mate. All the women love Nigel. Are you saying that I might be up to stage by my missus? Johnny, nobody could upstage you, mate. You are my best pal at Potter's. You do, I mean, honestly, you are, it's like Busby. I say about Busby. If you cut Busby's arm, he would have Potter's written all the way through it like a stick of rock. And JC, you are exactly the same. Nigel's gone now. He's fed up. Oh, look. Look at that. Who's that? Who's that? This What's his is name? Sonny. Hello, Sonny. Sonny sits, Sonny sits very patiently all the way through these, Johnny. Sonny is a really? cockapoo. He needs his hair cut. Like. He's lovely. My That's brother's a got a cockapoo. It's brilliant. Where's your dog, John? Sonny. Where's your dog? Where's mine? He's in the lounge with Sue. We should do a virtual not... crofts. We should get the guests to send in pictures of their dogs and we could do a virtual crofts. Oh, that's an idea of one of the shows. We'd actually do that. Well, you're Johnny. You're... I mean, Nigel, your show. I mean, I loved it. You had Kerry Ellis yesterday, Rachel Bailey and Busby. And I was so shocked. Somebody put earlier, Johnny, that's the quietest I've ever seen you. Okay? Yeah. That's what they said. And it, it wasn't because I just wanted to listen to their stories. And uh, Busby, I can't believe that, um, what was that? We are told to, we are all too young. Ah, lovely dog. Bailey, come in here, mate. No, you won't come over now. Bailey won't come over. And um, I forgot where I was, honestly. <laughs> where, where was I talking about? <laughs> oh, God. What was I talking about? Come on, then, you. 
Yeah, oh, look, Nigel. Here he comes. Here he comes. Look at which that. Which end is which? Stay oh, away. yeah, I can see. Yeah. Oh, look, there he is. It's that baby on the telly. Look. On the telly. Let me kiss. Let me kiss. Thank you. Oh. Right, go back to mummy. That's it. Go back to mummy. They then say that dogs look like their owners, Johnny. I know. Lovely, isn't it? I can't link me back either. <laughs> so if you, if you, Johnny, if you, <laughs> if you liked uh, Kerry Ellis, we got a special show tomorrow. We're doing guests' requests. We're asking anybody that would want to see anything from the past, as it's a kind of throwback Thursday. Uh, send in your requests in the comments, not not here on the next post we do. Put your comments in about what you'd like to see, and it can be anything. It can be Johnny in the swimming sketch. It could be Sean singing Ness and Dorma. It could be photographs of the very first time we unveiled the theatre or the hotel. If there's anything from the past that you want to see again, the ramble, the sausages, you know, at Barcelona, one day more. If you've got your favourites, then leave them in the comments on the next post, which will go up later today. Tara's going to post the next um, sort of advertisement for tomorrow night's Tomorrow day, we do these in the day. I must remember it's four o'clock. It's still sky. At four o'clock tomorrow, we'll be doing guests' requests. So if there's anything you want to see, you're going to pick the ten most popular, and we're going to show it in a show tomorrow. So Johnny, you might be in that. You might be in the top I'm ten. Like, what is this? I got to tell you. Now you mentioned the ramble. Do you know the story about uh, Brian Potter and me? Do you know the story in 1986? The yeah, the 1986. I used to do the ramble. Down to that other holiday park down the road, by the, which is now a sewer, which is now a sewer, you know, like yes. court, uh, the court of the Well, I used to get the people and I used to get them all together, loads of them. And I'd say, what, well, we'd go along the, 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 the cliff top. We'd walk along the cliff top, round the back of Radar Lodge and all around there. And I'd, halfway, we'd stop and we'd have a bit of a sing song. We had a guy playing the guitar, a bit of a sing song. I said, right, it's raffle time. It's raffle time. <laughs> it's through this, right? And the tickets are a pound each. You can have a ticket or you can have six for a fiver. Well, they said, I said, the prizes are a bottle of gin, a bottle of vodka, and a bottle of whiskey. You choose one of those. So I did it. And we had about, I suppose, then about 32 quid, something like that. I know it was 30 odd quid. We did it for a couple of weeks. Anyway, on my way back, I get into the, to the, to the, the park. And Brian Potts, oh, Johnny, can I see you upstairs a minute? I went, yeah, of course we can. So I went upstairs. I went upstairs, right? And they, uh, they turned around and said to me, um, he said, right, Johnny, he said, how's the, ra how's the ramble going? I said, oh, brilliant, Brian. Fantastic. He said, how's the raffle going? I said, doing really well, Brian. I said, I've got 58 quid now. And he said, what's that for, Johnny? I said, well, we're having an end of season party. And I thought we'd put it all together and have a party. And Brian went, he went, Johnny, if you give me the 58 quid, we'll put it to charity. He said, otherwise, you've got to keep doing the raffle. You, said, I'll pay for your, your train fare home. He said, because I'll give you the sack. <laughs> Somebody grasped me up. Somebody grasped me up. Can you believe that? that was a you've, got nice, no, you've got no enemies. And and this, this proves it. Look, you're definitely in the top 500 comedians I know in Hopton. Is that, is that, oh, that's Mike there, Scott. There aren't 500 <laughs> comedians in there Hopton. <laughs> now, listen, I can tell everybody I'm Judy Potter's favourite comedian. Even John yeah. Potter will belt for that. You are. Did you but see the other comments get, Mike, oh, one, Mike put before you, oh, here we go. You've got to do this, Johnny, before we, uh, before we sign off. Johnny, what's sign your off? absolute best joke before you go? I haven't got any. I'm not going to do any jokes. It's, I, just had two star comics on, and you want me to do a joke? Yeah, I'll do that when I... No, I will do some next week, next Friday. Because next Friday night... No, sorry, next Wednesday, Nigel, we've got um, a couple of Britain's Got Talent people on. Um, they were both in the final. And one of them actually had his own TV show. They gave him his own TV special. So that's next week, and I'm looking forward to it. So, Nigel, while you're on, apart from this, what else have you done? This week, I'm going to what else have we done? What on social media? Yeah, I know. I've seen on the social media, but what have you done apart from? I know you're locked in the loft. I'm you locked are Mrs. in my loft. Comedian, I, am, I am locked in a studio. Yeah, I'm surrounded by um, 
archives. So there's a, there's a lot of prepping, as you know. We spent what three hours today just trying to get yeah, this definitely. one hour to run. I spent about three hours yesterday preparing for Kerry's. Um, obviously, I'm going through a lot of the footage so that I can. I've got a good idea of what people are going to ask for tomorrow. You know, I, I can almost predict what their favourites are going to be. So I started today on getting a lot of that archive stuff ready to go. That will save my time. But, yeah, a lot of it is sitting in here and doing social media. And we're, we're sort of really wanted to, we're trying to stay focused on, um, on delivering and keeping in touch with all of you lovely guests and trying to provide that little bit of entertainment. Because I don't know about you, Johnny, but every time, if I am in front of the television, it's just repeats. There aren't very many new shows. So, you know, if we can be here and we can create some kind of community where everyone can drop in and say hi to each other, it's great reading the comments, you know. So many comments where people find this a kind of almost, this is like their messaging board where the guests who've got to know each other over the many years at Potters can come and hang out and just talk to us and talk to each other. So, therefore, if there's memories you want to see, tomorrow is the day i'm going to be here for another couple of hours tara will post after this one finishes tara will post up the advertisement for next show so please uh, engage with us come in and let us know what you'd like to see you know johnny i've got a few more before you go i've got a few more hang on uh got to feed 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 the tar yeah. for now what time tomorrow four yes. o'clock and we'll be on at four so you've got almost what 23 hours to send us your favorite request what would you like to see what would you like to hear johnny cleveland i went, I went to, to a faith healing early. session last night it was rubbish even the man in the wheelchair got up and walked out johnny seriously I can't believe it. you shouldn't have read that game. I read it halfway through and realised what it was. So I Seriously, thought, no, Johnny. The problem with Johnny Cleveland that. is that I don't know whether you've realised this, Johnny, but Johnny is so he's so deadpan that Johnny will tell you a story and he'll tell you a story for five or six minutes and you believe it and then he comes out with the punchline. And you realise you've just wasted five or six minutes of your life because he convinced you it was a true story. But no, it was a great one today. It was good to see. Uh, and you've got more. You've got, um, who's the character from uh, Benidorm you've got coming up as well? I've got Chrissy Rock. Chrissy Rock from Benidorm and The what Jungle. What character does she play in Benidorm? Well, she played, she, she wasn't in the last series. She was in the series before. She's the Scouser. I don't dare go on. But she, she's a lovely lady. I've got Graham Cole from The Bill. From the Bill. I've got hopefully Graham Cole. I've got Billy Pierce. I've got Darren Day. I've got loads. I mean, there's still. I mean, I've got. I've got loads. And I've also got some people like Lorraine McIntyre, who was uh, with us, and Alex. They want to come on as well. Now, um, you should and try and be... try and get Johnny Cleveland on. We will. We had him on before. We'll get him on again because uh, when Mike was doing it, we we weren't on on YouTube. So that'll be great. Hi, You're Mandy. all great for having him on. No, it's great I'd because pay... I, I forget... oh, can I plug I my show for Saturday? Mandy. I'd pay to hear Mandy sing right now, wouldn't you, Johnny? Oh, I would. You know what? She's going to come on the show. She's going to do the show one one week. But she, thank you for Potter's family and support. Love, David. So it'll, I was getting better slowly, hopefully. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Good to I was hear getting from you. Better yeah, lovely, Lynn. Take care, Lily. Um, oh. Sunday, Sue and I are doing yeah. a Valentine's show. So on oh. Sunday, we're doing, a, we're doing a Valentine's show at four o'clock. Johnny, yes. have you got, have you managed to to procure a present for Sue? She doesn't want one. No, we that's what do women that say, one. Johnny. I know. Johnny, that's what they Johnny. say. We're not it doing Valentine this year. That's what they say. That's not what they mean. Uh, I'm, I'm, Mike's giving you a gag I'm, here. Uh, R.I.P. Boiled you. Water. You will be missed. <laughs> That's Mandy, rubbish. yes, Mandy. I want to hear you sing. If I've, I've, if I had any footage of you singing, I would be, I would be putting on here. Um, okay, Johnny, I'm going to drop out so you can say your goodbyes. Good to see you and see everybody okay, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Nigel. Don't forget tomorrow, everybody tomorrow. Tara's going to put it on screen very, very shortly. Any, anything you want, like anything, any, any parts of you know bits. Oh, me here, please fill out. Any bits you want, um, put them on, and they will. And Nigel will pick the best ten and play them tomorrow for you. So listen, everybody, my guests, Mick Miller and Bernie Clifton, thank you. I hope you enjoyed that. 
that we just, you know, we, we, we finally got them on, OK? Next week, as I say, we've got two guys from Britain's Got Talent. And also on Sunday, Sue and I are doing our Valentine's show. Thank you so, so much. Take care. God bless everybody. And listen, stay safe. God bless. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>